everybody, it's me, Jessica Borden, again, coming to you with part one, session two of Customize Your Consumer Experience for the KW app. Just as a reminder, to complete this course, you guys are going to need the companion worksheet, which I'll show you in just a second, as well as access to KW Command. So let me quickly show you the companion worksheet. So this is the companion worksheet. It's posted in the Facebook group for you under the files. And if you need access to it, you can also access it through KW Connect. Or if you just ask me, I'll be happy to email it to you. So this is the companion worksheet we're going to be working with today. So let me go back in here for you real quick. All right. So in the last session, we talked about what is the KW app. So what is it? How does it work? How do we get started? In this session, we're going to focus on outlining your buyer and seller processes. So really and truly, this is going to be the meat and the potatoes, if you will, of your mobile app and the buyer and seller experience. So in the activity that we're going to walk through here in just a minute, we're going to first brainstorm the transactional milestones for sellers and then repeat the same for buyers. We're going to use that companion worksheet and work through those steps and figure out exactly what you want to include in your guide. Picking up with either the buyer guide or the seller guide to begin with and map that out and then go back and map through whichever one you didn't do first. So if you do the seller guide first, you'll map through that whole process and then you'll go back and do the buyer guide. So just know that you're going to complete the entirety of one process guide before you finish the second one. So let's think about the milestones in a seller transaction. So on this slide, you're going to see the basic steps of a seller's path in real estate transactions. This is the default set of steps that you're already going to find in the guide in your KW app. This list provides a good starting point for all of the seller's milestones. For your clients to get the most personalized experience, it's important to think through the unique steps or milestones that they're going to experience when they're working with you. Because each of us run businesses differently, it's important for you to look at what it is that you do for your buyers and for your sellers. So we're going to continue on the track with sellers for this demonstration, okay? So let's brainstorm and think of some other possible milestones along the way with sellers. So completing listing agreements, completing disclosures, preparing the home for sale. So there might be staging involved. There might be photography involved. There may be pre-inspections or repairs that need to be done ahead of time. Um, there could be a vendor list that you're giving to them at any point in the transaction. Maybe it's for repairs. So once that repair amendment is working through after the offer is accepted, there may be some, some vendors that you're giving to them. There might be moving companies that you're sharing with them. Maybe there's a utility worksheet that you're giving them at the very beginning of the process. So those are just a bunch of things that kind of came to my mind when I was thinking through it. Let's do the same thing with buyer transaction, just so that you can kind of start feeling what this is going to be like. And for some of you guys who are only buyer's agents, you guys are going to only work through really the buyer segment. You will probably want to put together a seller segment. You may want to get with your team uh, leader or your rainmaker to help you know what those process steps are. So let's look at the basic steps of the buyer's path. So just like the seller guide, this is the default set of steps that you're going to see in the guide of the KW app when you very first go in. This list is providing another good starting point for buyer milestones. But of course, for your clients to get the most personalized experience, it's important for you to think through the unique steps or milestones that they're experiencing again when they're working with you. So what other steps might there be? Should those steps be reordered perhaps? So some of the things that I think of is, that I would want to add to this is maybe a group of local lenders because this get pre-approved step is really only about the Keller mortgage opportunities for them. So you may want to give them not only the online mortgage opportunity, you may want to give them a local mortgage opportunity. Um, you may want to give them a home inspector list. Maybe you want to give them a home warranty 
set of info, not just what is a home warranty and why do I need it, but you may want to give them a list of people who are providers that you recommend. Same with home insurance. There's a lot of things that are happening throughout that transaction and you want to make sure that they have the on-demand real estate information that they need because they don't need you to be on-demand as an agent. They just need on-demand information. All right, so let's talk about the companion worksheet. So go ahead and look at the first page of this companion worksheet. This is the before worksheet. So I'll tell you, the very first time I started working through this worksheet, I made a mistake. I um, looked at before and I just jumped ahead in my um, fervency of wanting to get everything done and I didn't really read the instructions. So I implore you to read the instructions. <laughs> so here's the set of instructions. Use this guide to map out the steps your clients will take during the buying and selling process. Print the guide for your seller process and again for your buyer process. Go to agent.kw.com and log in. Go to go.kw.com forward slash app setup to set up your personalized app. Before, to communicate with your clients, you first need to understand how people and transactions move through your business. Use the space below to map the current flow of your business from a buyer or a seller lead up until the appointment. So I actually sat down and mapped the whole thing, the whole process from A, A to Z, start to finish, meeting to close, everything. And I realized that was not right. So this is everything that happens up until the point that you get the appointment with them. So that is going to look a little bit different because um, some of those things you may not know. You may need to think about all the lead sources that you have and where people are coming from and what you do with different lead sources and how you follow up with them. So you may be thinking a lot about your follow-up strategies right here. So what I would tell you to do is pick either the buyer or seller guide, whichever one you want to start with. My demonstration will be the seller guide. Um, in that first audience, you're going to figure out, are you focusing, you know, which one are you focusing on, buyers or sellers? Then you're going to list or draw all the steps of the beginning of the process to the appointment. That's the first thing you're going to do, okay? So while you guys sit down for a few minutes and figure out what are those steps, you may want to pause this video for just a couple of moments and then come back because I'm going to walk you through the rest of the steps. Okay, so now that you're back with me, we're going to keep moving forward. I'm going to demonstrate for you the example of the before steps that I mapped out on my companion worksheet. So as you guys kind of look over here to the left-hand side of the slide, you're going to see I wrote the word seller, and then you're going to see decide to sell. That's what they're going to do. That's the first thing that they're going to do. Um, they're going to look at homes for sale in the neighborhood, maybe. They're going to go to Zillow. They're going to go to other locations. From that, they're going to either contact an agent or they're going to make a decision to for sale by owner. Um, that's kind of how we know that people uh, make a decision. So... When they contact an agent or agents, they're going to contact a couple of agents, maybe more than two. I just did two for an example and said follows up, doesn't follow up. The one who follows up gets in touch. The one who doesn't follow up loses the lead. The one who gets in touch sends a pre-listing packet. So I always want to be, if I was working with sellers, I would want to be the one who follows up, gets in touch, and sends the pre-listing packet. So then over on the first sell by owner side, I just kind of walked through um, true for sell by owner, MLS entry only. Um, the agents call them when it's a true FISBO. They'll either list with an agent or they'll sell a FISBO, probably 1% of the time. You see the ha-ha next to that. Um, so MLS entry only, sometimes it sells and closes. If it does not sell, then they contact agents, real agents, not just entry only, and then they follow up or don't follow up. So you can kind of see that's the life cycle of what I chose to demonstrate for the before the appointment. So yours is going to probably look a lot different. I just kind of um, was thinking about, in my perspective, if I was going to start to sell real estate again without having a great sphere, this is where I would be. So some of you may be like that, where you don't really have a sphere, maybe you're new. So 
you just need to kind of think about how do people how do people find you okay um, so from here it's important to take a step because remember in our last session we walked through the first couple of steps in the Kelly guide for your consumer settings this time we're gonna actually walk through the third step of your Kelly guide so we did education and consumer settings last time now we're gonna do the guide builder and then I'm gonna show you guys the main guide management area as well when we finish the guide builder okay so I'm gonna leave out of here and go into my command okay so in here I'm gonna click on the consumer applet in the left hand menu okay and then we're gonna go back over to my site and app settings some of you guys may have already been here and are just picking up where you left off. But if you weren't and you just saved where you were and left and came back, you would do the same process. So you'll go to Learn More with Kelly Guides, Consumer Settings, and Continue. Okay. All right. So last time we talked about education and consumer settings. Okay. And then today we're going to talk about the guide. Okay, so those are just a quick recap of the first two steps. So the guide builder is our third step. So now that you're going, you've gone through, excuse me, you've gone through the before uh, before the appointment on your companion worksheet, um, you're going to begin the process of entering that information from the before section of the companion worksheet into the guide builder. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to come over here in the Kelly guide and you're going to click on the blue arrow next to setup. As you'll notice, these blue arrows you can hover but you cannot click. So you're going to click on setup and then you're going to choose whichever of the two guides you're starting with. So remember, I'm starting with Seller Guide. So under Seller Guide, I would click Next. And then in here, it's going to kind of walk through each of those steps. Introduce your custom-built guides to clients and explain how they're made to inform the buying and selling process. So this is where I could come in and edit a little bit about this. I only have 93 characters left in the message, so if I wanted to add something, it would not be very much. Um, one thing that I want to call your attention to here is that if this is your first time coming in, or even if it's not, um, the default name right here in the message is Paul. If your name is not Paul, you're going to want to make sure you change it to your name. Okay? So this is the start screen for the timeline guide okay so if you don't want to add anything or if you correct the word Paul to your name um, and add a little bit here once you're done with that you're going to hit next and this is actually going to show you the guide itself so you can add edit remove or reorder the steps in your guide until you're happy with the experience you've built so at this point, as you can see, showing your home is the first step in the guide. But there's a lot of things that happen before showing your home. So if you wanted to add a guide step, you could go ahead and add a guide step. You could call it, um, let's see, decide to sell your home. Okay, and then you're gonna put a small description like a subtitle right here it's probably a sentence or two sentences that are just going to show up on your actual guide so think of thinking about selling your home great right. this guide will walk you through all of the steps to get started Okay. And then you can actually add an image. So this is my second place that um, I probably have mentioned to you recently about being very careful with the images that you choose and to make sure that they're images that you have the rights to use. So just make sure if you guys are going to say um, 
Google Images or something, you want to be really careful with that. I would definitely recommend um, going to like Pixabay or Pexels or a website where you can get stock images. So I'm going to log into Pixabay real quick. And I'll show you how I do this. I think my Pixabay account is either this Gmail account. Sometimes I don't remember. <laughs> no. Uh, let's see here. Log in. I think it's actually this one. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, what we're going to do is just explore since it's not going to let me log in. See, y'all are not the only ones who have technical difficulties. Um, <laughs> sometimes I think y'all feel alone. Believe me, you are not alone. Um, okay, so we're going to search for real estate. Um, you probably see this house on a lot of things because it's the first one and it's really cute and people pick it all the time. And you'll probably notice that this one right here is the one that's already right here. <laughs> um, so let's see here. I'm going to use this one, this house key right here. Free download. That will be fun. All right. So I downloaded an image. Now what I can do is actually drag this right here and it'll put it right there. And then from here, I can actually pick this up and move it to the top. Let's see if I can get it moved. Oh, it doesn't want to move. There we go. Come on. It doesn't want to move. Okay, so now we're back to the top. And you can see the picture's right here, and it has my brief set of information. Okay? So what you're going to want to do is just keep repeating that process of adding the guide steps and using the different little... Um, six dots of the side over here on the right side to move it up and down. So as you guys go through um, this whole process, this is what you're going to be working on. Okay. But right now focus on the before because that's all you have brainstormed is what happens before the house is listed. Okay. So other than deciding to sell their home, another guide step would be listing your home. And then you would put in your small subtitle. Okay. So same thing. You can go back in here and search for another picture if you want to. Okay, so you can come in here and find the picture that you want, whatever that might be, and go forward with that. So if you wanted, um, I was trying to find something that would work. We'll just do this one right here. Free, oops, no, no, no. Okay, free download. So download, and then from there, you will add your next, your next photograph, okay? So once you get your different um, steps for before, let me get it up here. Oops. 
Come on, listen, your home. Get up there. Oh. Uh, worst case scenario, I can move it later. I think we got it, though. We did. We got it. Okay. So as you guys go through those steps up until showing your home, when you guys are getting all those entered in here, you may want to pause and then come back. Okay. All right. So now that you're back with us, we're going to go to the next step. We're going to talk about during the transaction. Okay. So right now, what you're going to do is take the second page of your companion worksheet. It looks just like this. It says during. You're going to be completing this and then walking through the same steps that we just did. Okay. So think through and draft the customer service activities that are important for your buyers or sellers, depending on which process you're working on. You're going to need to continue with the transactional path that was started on the previous page. So if you were with sellers the first time on the first page for before, just stay with sellers on this one and stay the course all the way through and then walk through the whole process again with buyers. Okay. This time you're mapping out the flow of your business from appointment to closed transaction. So you're going to list and draw all of the steps from the moment that you have your appointment all the way to the closing table. Okay, so all the way until the time it closes. So remember to use your companion worksheet, page two, during, in order to map it out. You'll see it broken into appointment, under contract, active, and closed. So you'll see that, and you're going to want to break all of that down. So while you're doing that, pause the video, and then when you're ready to come back, we will continue moving forward. Okay, now that you're back with us, we're going to look at what did I map out for my seller guide for the during transaction, okay? So if you're looking at this, I've got the appointment, the active, the under contract, and the close all broken apart separately. So under appointment, I have review a listing agreement, sign documents and disclosures, prepare to list, stage, photo, survey, utility info, etc. Do coming soon listing if applicable under active. I said, show home, set up showing time notices for sellers, review offers, do net sheets, offer comparisons inside of command, three, accept offer, under, under contract, one, home inspection, two, send vendor list in case of repairs, three, negotiate repairs, four, appraisal, five, moving company info, six, get closing gift, seven, what to take to closing, and then closed, one, close. Two, take sold photo. So those are everything that I thought of that would be happening during the transaction. And I very well could have missed some things, okay? So just know that this is the during portion, okay? So now we're going to jump back over and we're going to go back to the guide builder and work through from showing, my, showing your home all the way to closed. Okay, we're going to walk through that part of the process. So we're going to go out of there and back into command. And remember, we just did listing your home, showing your home. We just, and I mean, deciding to sell your home and listing your home. We just did those two. And we're starting with the process of showing your home. So if you click on showing your home, you may want to um, change this, but you also probably want to add some other pieces to this, like, you know, signing the listing agreement, um, signing disclosures, preparing it, so staging, photography, surveys. There may other be other pieces that you want to add. There is not a limit to the number of steps that you have in your guide. Um, you just want to make sure that you put them in the order that makes the most sense, okay? So you will continue walking through the same process that we just did with these two by adding additional guide steps and then dragging and dropping them into the correct location. Hopefully you won't have as much issue as I have. I think it's my touchpad. <laughs> so um, sometimes that happens. But you're just going to want to make sure you walk through here and get all of your during, your appointment, active, under contract, and closed steps into the transaction. Okay? So while you're working on that, you may want to pause the video so that you can get ready to come back. And I will meet you right back here.
Okay, so now that you're back with me again, and you've entered all of your during the transaction steps, we're gonna actually move to the final part of this flow of your um, guide for sellers or buyers. So for me, I'm still working on sellers. On this last page of your companion guide, it's titled After. So consider what will happen after a transaction closes. What do you do that the client may not know about that you want them to see? Use the space below to map the current flow of your business after a transaction closes. So what are some of the things that you do that are unique to you after the table, the handshake, everything happens with closing, after all of that's over? So you may want to pause the video for a minute again while you brainstorm out all those things that happen after closing. All right, now that you've finished brainstorming, I hope that you came up with some good stuff. Um, there's so many things that we do after a closing that we didn't even realize are really important for people to know. So, and some of what I wrote down may not be important for them to know, right? Um, it's just a brainstorming, a brain dumping session, right? I'm just pouring out everything in my brain about what happens after a closing. So submit the signed closing disclosure to the market center and submit loop. Turn in check. Add them to new smart plans, forever client, birthday, home anniversary if they also purchased with me. Add a quarterly call plan so I can call them once a quarter. Tag them as sold in contacts, update address information, put on monthly neighborhood nurture for new location. Um, so I think when I look at this, it helps me realize that I do a lot of things that they don't necessarily need to know about. But there's some things that they do need to know about. So you could set expectations. Let's go back to the guide builder and let you see kind of some of those ideas that I have. So after closing, I could add a guide step that's called checking in. And I could put down here, I will check in with you once a quarter via phone, as well as monthly through my um, neighborhood information email. You don't have to wait for me to reach out if you need me sooner. Okay, so I want them to know that I'm there for them even after the transaction is over. Okay, so again, I could come in and I could find a picture. Um, Maybe this one, right? I'm getting ready to call them. Let me call them. So it just says I'm checking in with them. So I could use this one. Okay, and we'll just drag that over here. I love Pixabay. It's such a great website for free stock stuff. Okay. All right. So now checking in. As you scroll to the bottom, you'll see checking in right there. Um, you may just want to set the expectation that you're going to continue to follow up with them. So it's not a surprise to them when you call. It's not a surprise to them when they get an email. Those are some really important things that you can be doing. Okay. All right. So let me take you back over here for just one second. All right. So you have walked through successfully at this point one of the two guides buyers and sellers of mapping the entirety of the transaction so before i show you where to get help i am going to show you one more important thing inside of command that i almost forgot um but it's so important to you okay so in here once you've completed this guide as far as the layout of everything you wanted to add you can click next and you see that there's a seller guide right here you will then go in to add your buyer guide or if you did buyer first you go and add your seller guide okay so just make sure to click add guide 
with Buyer's Guide and walk through your, your companion worksheet a second time just to make sure that, number one, you change your name from Paul to your name, add anything that's relevant that you want to add in the message on the introduction, and then go through all of the steps of the guide to make sure that you have all of those really important pieces of information there and available to your buyers, okay? So just remember, you're, right now, all you're doing is you're putting in basic information. It's just a title, an image, and a subtitle, which is just one to two sentences of information, letting them know what that segment's about, okay? So from here, once you've done that, you'll have both guides ready to deploy. And then in here, you will be to the point of number four and five, which is our next third session of this series, okay? So in here, I am going to actually just move forward to number four, and I'm gonna open up a new window for you so that I don't have to leave that window. Okay, so I'm going to go back into command, and you don't have to follow along with me. Technically, you can just follow along with me visually, okay? I came back to my consumer applet in command. So once you have set up those basic structures of your guide in that Kelly guide, you can come in to consumer to the guide builder. Inside of the guide builder, you will find the two guides that you have created the structure, the outline, right? Remember back in school, you had the outline where you put your you know, Roman, number, Roman number one and your A, B, C, and then your one, two, three, and your sub A, B, C, et cetera, right? So you, you started out with your main Roman numerals on that first um, part of the outline. Now you're going to go in and get into the meat, right? So you can go in and you can click on the edit crayon. So I'm going to click on the edit crayon next to sellers. And on here, as I work through these different steps, I can click inside the box and it's going to give me the image. So if you didn't do images before, you could come in here and add images now. Um, or if you don't like it, you can come in and add it again. Okay. Um, you can come in and go into the workspace details. So when they, when they view this, they actually get the opportunity to click on this box and then there's a whole lot more information that they can see. So decide to sell your home. Thinking about selling, great. This guide will work, walk you through all the steps to get started. So then in here in the workspace text, you might wanna write something like, um, maybe you've been looking for, um, you know, your home values through Zillow or trying to track um, different properties that are for sale in your neighborhood online. I offer, I can offer you a lot of different tools, a variety of tools, whatever you want to say. So you want to go in and explain what it is that you're offering to them, your value of proposition for them deciding to listing, listing their home with you, right? What is the thing that's going to pivot them across to decide to list with you? Because um, even if they have your app, I mean, obviously, if they have your app, then you're already in emotional proximity to them, as we talked about in our first session. But you want to make sure that they're getting the information that they need. The questions that you get regularly from people who are thinking about deciding to list their home or not, all those questions, you want to answer those questions in the workspace text. So before they even ask the question, they have the answer. So just think about that when you guys are going in and doing this. So as you walk through each of these different segments, you're going to want to make sure that you enter in the information in the workspace text, okay? So for instance, if I looked at showing your home, you will see that there is a number of bits of information in this workspace text, right? So this is the stuff that Keller Williams already drafted, but you may want to go in and make it your own, right? But if you add new steps, like these two that I added right here, listing your home and deciding to sell your home, those are items that I created. So unless I come into this guide builder and add the workspace text, it will not exist. So just make sure that you do that. This is the final step to completing everything with your um, buyer and seller guides is coming into the guide builder. Okay. 
that. So definitely wanted to show you that. So again, in the last video, I showed you guys some locations to get help. I'm going to remind you of the main location that you can use to get help. So you've got under technology on kwconnect.com, you have command your business. Okay. So under command your business, you're going to scroll about halfway down the page and you're going to find command your consumer experience with the KW app and sites. You can learn more. You can receive recommended training. So in here, you have session two, three, four, five on the KW app. Okay, so on here, this is talking about downloading the consumer app and getting together with the end to end experience and understanding that. And then in here, in session three, underneath command your business, you're going to see consumer experience and the companion worksheet. So these are the things that I'm talking to you about today. Okay and customizing your consumer guide. So this is a read that you can read for 10 minutes and then these are some videos that you guys can look at, okay? And a resource. So you have a video, a resource, and a, a reading resource, okay? And then again, as you guys get down into session four here, you're gonna be talking about the SMART plan, which is what we're gonna discuss in session three of my sessions here, okay? so. I kind of took a large class, which was broken into one big chunk and chunked it into pieces for you. So just know that um, when you go in here, you're going to have some different resources that match what I've been teaching you so that you're not going to be lost. Okay. So remember, go through your guide. The first thing you're doing is creating the outline. The second thing you're doing inside of Guide Builder is creating the actual meat and material that your people are going to be reading and answering all those questions proactively, okay? Um, so feel free to come back in here and get the help that you need on kwconnect.com and tune into the pivot shift ahead that they've been doing right now. It's been really awesome. So there's a lot of really great classes that they haven't done before. So if you've been on KW connect.com before and thought I've seen it before. Don't miss um, some of the, the training that they're doing um, on the pivot shift ahead. It's a lot of different stuff. So don't miss that. And of course, if you have any questions, feel free to call, text, or email me. I'm here to help. And I look forward to helping you guys out and happy um, guide building, y'all. Have a great day. And I'll see you soon for session three.